Hey guys, Anthony here. I want to show you guys my Nutrieval test results today. Uh, I had this test done a couple weeks ago. I had serum and saliva samples taken um, and I've just basically been waiting to hear from my doctor uh, or my practitioner. I'm using a fun functional doctor now uh, who has basically taken me through the test and explained things to me, which I will try to remember as best as I can. However, I will give you the best overview I can to my knowledge based on what I know. So we'll truly just start from the beginning. Now, I did have a one test done two years ago, almost to the day. I'll just minimize myself here. Almost to the day. Um, so it's really interesting when I put them side by side to see how things had changed. It was, uh, it was quite incredible, actually. So I'll just make that a little bit larger. I'll move myself across. Okay, so we'll start with the um, overview. Now, B1, B9, B12, borderline deficient, magnesium borderline deficient. This was similar to my last one, except my B vitamins weren't too bad on my last one. This is just an overall, though. We'll get down to the actual figure soon. Vitamin D, very deficient. Okay, now the next thing we'll look at is, I mean, vitamin D. Obviously, anyone with ME or chronic fatigue or any of those illnesses where you're in bed, um, you're going to be a, bit, a little bit deficient in D. So this is my Krebs cycle, effectively. It's my citric acid cycle. It's how you convert your fats, carbohydrates, and proteins into energy. Um, essentially, ATP. Now, it's quite common knowledge now that people with ME or these type of illnesses... Uh, are having a lot of difficulty methylating and turning things into other things um, to create enough ATP. It results in something called PEM, post-exertional malaise, where if you do something today, you won't feel the effects from that for a couple of days because it takes that long for your uh, ATP reserves to catch up, essentially. So it's a bit of a mitochondria disorder, um, however, if we look at what's going wrong, we can kind of try and make enough assumptions to, to see if we can figure it out a little bit. So I don't know much about the Krebs cycle, but I know mine's fucked. <laughs> okay, that's, that's basically what I'll tell you. Um, so you can see with the, the red circles here that look a bit like uh, what you find at the train station, um, that's an inhibitor. Okay, essentially what that means is I've got a blockage happening here. As you can see, I've got no lactic, lactic acid, uh, which is going through to there. And I, I'm just not, something's there that's not helping me. It could be ASHG, which is mercury, which we know is my issue, SB. Um, not sure what these are. Is that I'm not going to guess before I get them wrong. Uh, then going down, we're not making much of this either. Uh, and then we get into the real cycle where I've got inhibitor, 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 and another inhibitor. So it's not going very well. Once that goes round, it just keeps going round and, and you convert. So we can see that I've got a big issue here. Okay, so let's get into the numbers below and figure out how we fix this. Well, we know that I need to collate my metals. There's no denying that. That is what I'm going to continue to do. This test is basically to help me do that because it's very difficult. It's it's just, it's a lot on the body. And even though I use a safe method of collation, the only method of collation I would um, promote to anyone to do, that I find is safe enough to do so, any form of collation is hard on your body because you're taking metals, very toxic substances, through your body, through your system, to be eliminated. Um, and no matter how gentle you do it, it's gonna happen. However, it's best to stay as gentle as possible while you support all the other systems to work and keep you functioning and feeling good enough. So, that's what we're aiming for here. So we'll look at my malabsorption and dysbiosis. Now, I think it's clear that I do have some dysbiosis. Um, a lot of my markers are very borderline, nearly all of them are borderline. Um, and one in the red there. I could have told you that I have yeast and fungal dysbiosis 
issues anyway, maybe bacterial and, and definitely malabsorption anyway. Um, I have six months before I collapsed, I, um, I had all these like small fungal things appearing on my skin. After I collapsed, that basically my, my body just blossomed in them. The only thing that helps me with them is a propolis tincture, which I basically sit in my living room naked, swathing my body with this brown substance that dyes and stains everything it touches. I've got a ridiculous stain on my carpet that I'm going to have to um, try and get by my <laughs> my landlord with. Anyway, uh, so there's various things you can do for this. Well, first, it's I think it's going to be necessary for me to do another uh, stool test fairly soon, just to look at my gut health and show my... Um, my bacteria because pardon me um a lot of the bacteria that you have in your gut uh helps with a lot of these things even the malabsorption uh obviously dysbiosis uh, but that goes further really you can assume that i've probably got SIBO as well um i haven't tested for that but i don't think i even need to i think it's pretty obvious most people do um, when when they get to my level. So then we've got lactic acid. Now I'm not really doing anything, no exercise. So I, maybe I'm just not creating lactic acid for that to come out. Really low on pyruvic and energy metabolism. Uh, my citric acid is super low, 95 borderline. Uh, and the range for that is between 40 and 520. So I need to get that up. Uh, again, another really bad one, another bad one, another bad one, and no succinic acid. Now, succinic acid is um, basically a precursor to creating ATP, I believe. It's further down in the page, um, but it's a really important one. My malic acid is low, and this one is, uh, it's okay. Fatty acid metabolism, no reading for that. Um, not sure if that's good or not if I'm honest that one's close to borderline as well going back up the up to the top neurotransmitter metabolites uh, these are okay uh, but still a couple on the edge there my vitamin markers all of them are on the low side of good and my toxin and detoxification markers are also closer to the borderline range that than I'd like so it's my tyrosine metabolism. I was taking tyrosine last year. Uh, didn't really feel anything from it. Now my amino acids are terrible. They're all over the place. Uh, they're all very, very low. They should be up, if anything, um, which is where we want them. However, my body's just not using them. So um, essentially this comes from my body not turning my food into amino acids, uh, which is obviously very important. So we're going to start um, doing something about that. Namely, I'm going to start on B12 injections. So you'll see me doing those. I will do an injection literally on video, probably at one point. If they go well, if they don't, then I won't advise them, of course. Um, but I'll, um, I'll show the process anyway. And uh, I'm going to start on B6 because there's, there's a lot of things that I'm missing with that. Anyway, let's let's carry on uh, non-essential protein amino acids again all on borderline uh, B vitamin markers very close to borderline so on so on so uh, we're, we're really um, stuck here because nothing's metabolizing as it should so the first thing I'm going to do to try and address this is to take more from the food that I actually eat um, so I already take betaine HDL, but I'm going to add some more digestive enzymes. I was on some before, but I just wasn't sure if they were helping me um, or not. So I stopped them, but I'm going to go back on some because I think I'm at the point where I can see that I'm not taking what I need to from my food. So I'm going to go back on some. Going down, my essential and metabolic fatty acid markers. Okay, so 
no a linolenic um, again really borderline omega-9 borderline saturated fatty acids borderline almost in the red there omega-6s as you can see again quite bad all over the place monosaturated fats all nearly borderline and my cardiovascular risk I'm not too worried about this <laughs> if um, you know I've got I've got enough on my plate uh, but my omega-3 index is low very low so I'm gonna start on a good fish oil omega-3 again so I need to be taking in some good omega-3s which I'm just not right now that's that's truly what it is I just need to start taking in some and I think that by doing that I will certainly feel a difference if I'm truly this deficient omega-6s as well I need some of those my oxidative stress markers now interestingly my glutathione is through the roof however what this really shows is that my body's just not using it so actually um, my body just it, it's, it's having an issue using the actual glutathione so I need to look into why the cause of that might be it's very unusual my coenzyme Q10 isn't too bad uh, I'm so yawny I apologize toxic elements you can kind of ignore um, well maybe not but uh, um, for me if they're at this level I think the best result you can the, the best test you can do is a hair mineral analysis uh, and then have an expert look at it because that tells you a lot more for example in the Andy Cutler group they take your hair mineral analysis and they have something called the counting rules and based on your mineral derangement they can tell you if you're mercury toxic at least up to 99% sure um, so these markers although they're they're up a little bit I'm not too worried about them nutrient elements um, this I already kind of knew interestingly my zinc is spot on so that's good but selenium we do need to boost that up because that does help a lot of the processes anyway with energy metabolization etc uh, and this is my um, homocysteine right so this is just out of the range um, let's have a look what does this do what does this do uh, I can't remember exactly what it does in my functions but it's a little bit high so we need to get that down a bit and then it basically takes you through all of the things here we are succinic acid participates in the citric acid cycle acting to donate electrons to the mitochondrial electron transport and leading to the f formation of fumaric acid um, so okay chronic fatigue patients may also show low levels Although studies on this topic are mixed, low levels may also be an indicator of B12 or folate deficiency, which I have, and I'm going to start on the B12 injections. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so that we'll, we'll stop there. But essentially, um, that's where I'm at with this test. Now, I know I didn't give you all of the doctor knowledge that you might expect from a practitioner. Well, the news is, is that I'm not one, and I'm just like you. I'm just trying to figure this out and I just want to share as much as I can with you guys so you can get an idea of what I'm doing um, and maybe it will inspire you to do the same or look into something else that you can gain more answers from to, to go ahead. Now it's not easy funding all this stuff, I get that. Um, so you know if you need help you must ask people who are close to you okay and you must believe that you're going to get better so you can pay them back one day you have to do what you can to finance these things so i get it it's it's difficult so i i do understand all of that i'm now in a position where i can work from home and i'm very fortunate to be able to get these things done um but i was just where you were if you're still in bed right now and it's difficult but you must use as much of your support network as possible because you need to find these answers the supplements aren't cheap the tests aren't cheap but if you can save every penny on you know perhaps just 
you know, if you're still eating some bad foods, etc., uh, you know, save that money so you can get another test done. Um, don't buy that coat this week so you can get this test done. Little things. Now, th that won't be relevant to all of you. Some people have literally been in bed for the last year. Um, so I understand all that as well. But I just, I want people to find more answers. And I don't have the answer to, to fund these things. But it's, it's, um, it's something that I would urge you to look into if, it's, if you can. If you can't, then I believe you'll find the answers anyway if you keep looking. Keep making consistent action towards getting better and you will, you truly will. So, I'll end it there today. This has been my Nutrival results. I hope you've gained something from it. Perhaps just, um, maybe it was just interesting for you to see uh, that you can get so much information from a single test. Um, so yeah, I will put this out straight away and um, I'll speak to you all soon. Take care.